Hello, everyone. Thanks again for joining us at the 2023 Sloan Sports Analytics Conference Competitive Advantage Talks presented by Kager, also known as the Craft Analytics Group. My name is Evan Lefkowitz. I'm a first year MBA student at MIT Sloan, and it is my pleasure to introduce our presentation, Advantage US Tennis, Leveraging Performance Analytics and Technology to Gain a Competitive Edge. Please join me in welcoming our speaker, David Ramos, Director of Performance Analytics and T uh, Coaching Development for the USTA. Good morning. It is my pleasure to be here and thank you, Evan, for all your help in preparing this presentation. I can't tell you how excited I am to be back here. I was here in 2020 and I remember I was on, you know, en route to be able to go to Indian Wells directly here to supply scouting and information for American players. And my mom called and said, this whole COVID thing, it's really centered right there in Boston. Are you gonna, are you gonna go? I'm like, mom, unless they cancel the tournament, I'm going, you know, this Indian Wells is an event and they canceled the tournament the same day. And I thought, wow, this COVID thing is, is, is real. So to be back here and most importantly, talking about the competitive advantage that uh, we have with, with US tennis and, and telling a little bit about the story first and foremost of how US tennis is doing currently. And more importantly, the timeline of how we developed an analytics department is, is uh, particularly important. So do we have any tennis fans in the room? I'm not gonna say anything about pickleball. I'm gonna keep, I'm, Adam said just always punch up, never punch down. So we're gonna celebrate, take a minute to celebrate the greatest success in the last 30 years of American tennis. And that is a big deal, 30 years. I'm, I wanna give us a round of applause for the sport, right? <laughs> Quotes from recent stories from CNN. Why 2023 is a year to be optimistic for American tennis. On the men's and women's circuits, American players won more singles and doubles titles last year than any other nation. 22 on the ATP tour and 21 on the WTA tour. The article on the right-hand side, Americans are forced to be reckoned with at AO 2023. Wherever you look across the current tennis scene, the stars and stripes of the US flag are blazoned on your screens. The strength and depth in American tennis is as good at it as it gets. But it, always, it wasn't always that good. So rewind back to 2009. We have eight men and four women in the top 100. Andy Roddick hasn't won a slam since 2003, and Serena's being Serena. She's number one in the world. Thank God for the Williams sisters. Player development, if you're not aware, is a division at that time. It was a separate division of the USTA, which was charged with having uh, the mission of developing top professional tennis players. And at that, at that time, the goal was top 100 in the world. And we really wanted to get players in the top 100, flood the top 100. So there was a changing of the guard. Pat Patrick McEnroe was hired to be the general manager, and he shortly brought on Jose Higueras, famous legendary coach, if, you don't, if you're not aware, one of the few people to work with, you know, players like uh, Sampras Chang, other Grand Slam champions, as our director of tennis. So we're essentially challenged with a mission to implement a systematic and professional approach to develop world-class American tennis players, but most importantly, in partnership with the private sector in the USTA sections because quite frankly, the player development division didn't have uh, a reputation as being incredibly collaborative. It was kind of, we went and got players and supported them and sometimes we left the sections and the private sector behind. So fast forward to 2023, some new leadership. Martin Blackman, general manager, Ola Malmquist is the, is the uh, director of, of tennis. We have Kathy Rinaldi, one of my favorite people in the world is the head of women's tennis and the BJK cup captain and Ken Kinnear. And, and you see some of the faces there that are amongst uh, the top players. Now we have 14 men in the top 100 and 15 women, you know, essentially doubling the numbers that we had in 2009. And those numbers could go up. We have Riley L. Pelka, who has been injured, was top 20, is 102. Chris Eubanks, Sophia Cannon, these are, these are all players that have joined us. Uh, we also started having, hosting wheelchair players in player development. It's an embedded part of the USTA now, and it's, it's not a, uh, a secondary piece of, of uh, coaching that we do. So super proud to have a direct impact on some of these players. When we take a look at the, the 29 players right now, and Taylor Fritz is five, these, are, these will fluctuate based on the moment and the live rankings, et cetera. 
but 29 players in the top 100. You know, congratulations to these players. It's, it's, a, it's an incredible uh, achievement to reach top 100 and that they continue to push each other. And, you know, again, four men under 21, Korda, Shelton, Brooksby, and Nakashima. One woman under 21, Coco Goff, and three at 21, Anna Samova, McNally, um, and, and Katie Volinets. So the players that are highlighted, essentially, we've coached directly or came through our camp network. So, we're, you know, in the, in the case of Taylor Fritz and Francis, uh, you're going to see some video that lets them tell a little bit of story about the story about uh, how, we, how we impacted their development. So when we talk about competitive advantage, first and foremost, I'm going to talk about our teaching and coaching philosophy, uh, how we were able to develop some core principles, some common language, and deliver those through our camp network and really focus on, on coaching education. And you'd say, well, how is, how is analytics or how did video and data uh, play a role in that? Well, these, these big tenants of how we work within our tennis uh, ecosystem, technical, tactical, physical, and mental, were essentially drawn up using video. In some cases, we were going through video and studying the players, the best players in the world, or looking at the quarterfinals on and figuring out what the parameters were for these particular areas. So when I talk about competitive advantage, I'm going to address technical, tactical, physical, and mental. So the, the, the way that we work is part of a performance team approach. And any of the best players in the world, Novak Djokovic is probably most famous for really not being able to get it over the, the finish line until he had a, an external coach that helped him with his serve technique. He had, had gluten issues, so he changed his diet. Now he travels around with a hyperbolic chamber and sleeps in it. He's looking for every possible advantage, and he has this amazing performance team around him. And the, this model actually came from the US o, OC uh, initially. Dr. Paul Lubbers, who uh, was one of my mentors at the USTA, a 20-year veteran in player development, uh, we took players to the US o, o, OC at that time in 2009 and did a bunch of testing, and we, and we thought to ourselves, we need to develop this same model because realistically, Coach is king in tennis. Whatever the coach said was, was really the driving force. And we want to make sure that strength and conditioning, you know, the physio, the nutritionalist, the mental skills all had a role in developing a player in a more 360 degree approach. So here is our team. We officially formed an analytics department in 2019, but really the effort to use data, video, et cetera, started in 2009. I'll take you a little bit through that timeline. So we have uh, Jeff Russell, senior manager of innovation, uh, or senior manager of Team USA and innovation. Catherine Gonzalez uh, works in that department as well. And, and they are kind of, I would say like 50-50 in the Team USA department and they help us with analytics. Adam Snook, who's sitting here with us today, is the, is the manager of performance analytics and joined our team in 2019 when we were we formally able to go out and, and uh, search the world for talent in, in order to do this, this particular job. And, and there I am. And I, I think of all the pictures that I have of the team together, this is the one in 2019 where I really recognize, like, we delivered. We did everything that we said we could. We, every match that was played at the US Open, we got to the players within 24 hours. Every time they had an opponent, they had video and scouting and information. You know, we had, we had finally arrived in terms of being able to deliver something that was really difficult. So our team goals during, throughout the, the course of the year are number one, to serve about 500 unique athletes, and that's all the way through the pathway. We start with kids who are 11 to 14, work with transition level players, work with wheelchair, and also working with world-class players. Uh, we wind up doing about 1,000 scouting instances throughout the, the course of the, of the, of the year, get, sending out information at major tournaments to give them support. We have uh, performance analytic services, what might, which might be technical, it might be tactical, it might be questions that we need to answer. It could uh, have lots of different variations. Um, we tag about 1,500 matches. And if you're not clear on what tagging is, essentially you're taking data, you're laying it over the video so you have an indexed uh, visual of that match. You want to see all the first serves that went to a certain location, all the winners, all the errors. Now we have the ability to take out all the individual shots. Let me see all the forehands, all the backhands, and all the characteristics that come from your player and ball tracking which we never had in the past. 
We are, uh, we are we're delivering this information through lab sessions, and I'll show you a little bit more about what a lab session looks like. Uh, Adam has really been leading that charge and getting our players and coaches together to, to give them information and use our performance lab. And we're also finally bringing this information together with uh, a project that involves USTA IT on the pro tennis side with a data lake so we can get further uh, insights and we'll, we'll show you a diagram of that in just a second. So when I talk about uh, the role that video and performance analytics has played in the resurgence of American tennis, this is, this is really what, what I comes to my mind, is this idea of we went from exclamation points to question marks. We went from telling, and this is mostly national coaches with 20 plus years of experience, we went from telling with conviction to asking with curiosity. We went from I know I'm right to is this what I think I see. Uh, we went from the coaches king model to a coaching philosophy and a performance team based approach that had a more 360 uh, view. We, we basically changed the culture by giving coaches and leadership the ability to see and measure performance technically, tactically, and now physically and mentally, which has been probably the most challenging areas in order to, to create real measure. Um, and initially, we also pushed our staff to, to enter data into an athlete management system. And initially, that's all manual, somebody putting in assessments, et cetera. But more and more, we're using things like electronic line, line calling data, um, computer vision, other ways to, to gather data so that it's not all manual. We evolved our data generation, collection, integration, and visualization through partnerships with best-in-class technologies and industry leaders, and some of them are, are here today, and thank you so much for, for your help. So when we talk about our, our teaching and coaching philosophy, the two things I think that are, you know, we, we, where analytics and the, the use of video really developed was this concept of parameters. And I'll show you a little bit more. We, we basically used video of hundreds of players. We broke them into the key positions, and we found what are the common fundamentals of the best players in the world for every one of the strokes that we had. Then we also did the same thing with quarterfinals on with, from the Grand Slams. We added data. We looked at what are the patterns of play, et cetera. Um, we started using athlete management to collect system uh, information on development, on s and 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 the schedule, and we started to be able to integrate all these things together, which was, was completely new. It all really started in 2009. So here's an example of us, you know, what we have in our philosophy presentation. We take forehands, we take backhands, et cetera, and we go and break them into key positions. And we traveled around the country with this concept, and we showed folks, hey, you know, what do you think about the parameters of the grip? And we literally did a tour. I'll show you the, the numbers on the, the num number of places we went to and discussions we had. What do you think about preparation, loading stance? And we probably came up with, with this information that we said, this is, describes the parameters of a normal forehand, backhand, et cetera. We also did the same thing for movement. We looked at lateral, we looked at diagonal, we looked at forward and backward, we looked at transitional movements and the footwork patterns associated with those things so that we could do a better job of, of teaching these to our coaches and our strength and conditioning coaches as well. And then again, we used tagging and, and match data to talk about anticipation and recognition to, to basically demonstrate what high percentage shot selection was and what patterns were pl of play were and that we included drills to work on those areas in our camp curriculum. And that's really the vehicle that we use to, to do coaching education and communicate these ideas. So sectional, regional, national camps, thousands of camps that we delivered, and we really had an impact across the entire pathway. We also developed competencies, technical, tactical, for 10 and under tennis. So it wasn't like we're just working with the best players, we also worked with 11, 14-year-olds, we worked with 10 and under, and then we had our professional players as well. But if anybody can, you can take a picture of this, if anybody other than Josh can send me every person that's up there, I will send you a Team USA camp shirt, okay? You can use Google if you need to, but take a picture of this, Ramos at USTA, if you can identify all those players up there, I will send you a Team USA t-shirt that, that you cannot purchase anywhere. Um, I'm going to show you a quick video to, to get a, a feel of how the players felt, that the, how, how important their camp experience was and how PD played a role in their development. I attended my first uh, PD camp when I was eight years old. 
I went to my first camp at age 12. I'm Riley O'Pelka, I'm 12 years old, and I'm from Palm Coast, Florida. I was so little. <laughs> I'm Amanda, and I live in Florida, and I'm eight years old. When I would go to USTA and Coach Richard did so much work with me. I was like 15 years old. Taylor Fritz, San Diego, and October 28, 1997. I wasn't that good of a player, and I went down to player development in Boca with all the guys. From super young age, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm Brad Siebel, and I'm from Foxborough, Florida. I'm 12 years old. Talent ID, bringing the camps together, bringing the best you know juniors in the country together seeing each other felt more motivated you know i just got my butt kicked by francis and tommy and i just remember being so excited to go home and, and start to practice and train like like i saw the the pros and the, the older guys doing it and it was way back i mean starting at age 11 i had access to some of the best the best coach been able to work with so many great coaches because of them and through them and coach richard did some nankin's amazing also, Ginepri was great. My coach right now, Henry Nellis, I met through USCA, so I'm super grateful for that. I love coming down to player development. I actually live out here in Lake Nona. I've been living here for three years, and this is my base. Even when I was a teenager, um, I would travel to Orlando. It still helps me a lot to this day, just having like a, you know, a home kind of base because we have a lot of really great players, and it's the best. I mean, it's it's the best training center we have anywhere outside of Orlando. First of all, the training base in Carson has been critical to my tennis career. The results speak for themselves. Multiple gold balls, uh, a junior Wimbledon title, three ATP singles titles, and a ranking inside the top 20 on the ATP tour today. We couldn't have done it without the USD and the system. Talk about how important player development has been for me. It's just incredible the amount of support that I've received over the years. Uh, I really could never have done anything in tennis without them. Just wanted to let you guys know how big a role PD plays, and how vital it was not only in my career, um, you know, but my in my peers' career. Beyond grateful and, and beyond thankful for everything that that USTA has done for me. I know I wouldn't be here without them. I wouldn't definitely wouldn't be playing at this level without their support. It became uh, a lot better player because of it, and I definitely wouldn't have become a player that was good enough to be the junior world champion or turn pro straight out of high school if it wasn't for, um, you know, the, the stuff I did in player development when I was younger. The cycle, and, and I think that cycle needs to keep coming of camps, then slowly, you know, transitioning into pros and, and starting that over and over and over, and we keep kind of pushing it and pushing it and keeping the, the standard higher and higher. So it's always, it's always funny to see those videos because uh, I remember carrying the camera out and helping, you know, basically thousands of camps. We have this progression. And if you're, if you're interested to see what the, the progression of Francis TFO's uh, serve, which is pretty unique, you know, it was kind of different when it was younger. Go and check out Twitter there in the US Open. They did a really cool piece where they showed his serve over the years and then culminates with him hitting a serve at the US Open this year and getting to the semifinals. So partnership, again, we talked about what the mission of player development was. It wasn't just to make top 10 players and have Grand, Cham Grand Slam champions or, or reach 100, uh, top 100 in the world. We, we basically had to partner with the entire country and be become more inclusive. So we partnered with the best junior development programs, we, and we call them regional training centers. It allowed us to sort of scale what we did in terms of developing our philosophy. And we traveled around the country, did uh, 24, we had 24 regional training centers. We did 17 different teaching and coaching symposiums. We had over 60 one-day workshops, and we're able to impact about 7,000 coaches during this 10 years of 2009 2000, through 2019. So this really gave us the structure to be able to, to scale the things that we did in, this, in the camps and, and reach quite a few people, make an impact. One of the ways that we have done this within the mental area is to create these seven compete like a champion qualities. And this was actually done in a data-driven way. Asked uh, hundreds of coaches what are the things they wanted their players to exhibit when they came on court, and we came up with this short list. We've since worked with them together to look at the time in between points and actually measure, well, is this person consistently able to deliver their rituals in a way that they're, they're managing the stress? 
We've created videos to tell players about what is professionalism and stories throughout the US Open that, that say this is, this is somebody who you know, exhibited these different qualities. And we're gonna be doing research in 2023 to find out by looking at match data, what actually is a measure of resilience? How often does somebody break after they've been broken? How often do they hold when they're down low 40 on serve? So there's real data that can support things like character qualities that, that we're continued to, to try and measure. It's pretty difficult. So quick timeline here, in, 20, 20, in 2012, uh, I had a, a team of six remote volunteers. They were our professional tennis management students that I collected from around the country. We got a webinars, I trained them how to tag matches, and it wasn't necessarily very easy. It was the first time that we had pro pro provided scouting to the Davis Cup, giving them reports and video game plans, and we upset Switzerland, including Roger Federer and uh, Stan Wawrinka, which was a pretty big deal in the first round, and wound up losing to Spain on clay. But uh, that was our initiation to this concept of providing analytics at a high level to the top of the US. In 2015, we, we didn't have any video platforms yet or real scouting reports, but we, we connected for the first time all the players in the US draw and said, hey, here's a match of your, of the, of your opponent in the match analysis system, which was part of the US Open's delivery to, to players. And if we didn't find a match of them in there, we went to YouTube or live stream or wherever we could to provide resources. And I remember Marty Fish saying, thank God that you were able to supply some video on this guy because this was his last US Open. He had no idea who his opponent was. And he said that that really helped him. Uh, and we didn't even have, you know, at that time, high level analytics. Since that point, COVID made a huge a change in the US Open, right? All the courts were covered with broadcast video, finally, because in, in the 2016, 2017, we were actually taking cameras out to manually record those matches. And now having video and data on every single court allows us to provide you know, 305 tag matches in 2022. And uh, scouting reports, 100 and different 24 instances. So we're able to do more and more at our home slam, which is, of course, uh, provides the greatest value, but we also do this at the, uh, the, uh, the four other Grand Slams. We have a partnership with Tennis Australia and the LTA in particular to try to trade data and video, et cetera. Team USA Pro was, was kind of a unique um, development in, in where we started to not necessarily have people train with us full time, but we could provide them whatever resources that they wanted, whether it was a training base or it was mental skills. They didn't have to be under the PD umbrella. We would give them whatever services that they wanted to, and it really created this environment of, hey, come and do with whatever services that you want from us. You don't have, we don't have to coach you full time. You can, you can have uh, mental skills. You can have strength and conditioning. That's Jeff Russell, Kathy Rinaldi, Tom Gullickson. Larry Lauer, our director of mental skills, is in the back corner there, and Satoshi Oshii, Satoshi Oshii is our head of strength and conditioning. So we were, we were really providing all these different areas, and the one area that we knew players wouldn't pay for was this concept of match analysis and be able to tell them about their identity and give them more information and special projects about you know, players, things that they, they may not be aware of. 2017 was a huge highlight. Uh, the United States claimed its uh, 18th Fed Cup against Belarus in 2017, ending a 17-year drought. Kathy Rinaldi, a close personal friend of mine, Jeff Russell and I continue to be on that team as team members to this day. And there's no question that a data-driven approach and using scouting helped us to gain an advantage and we continue to do that on both the men's and women's side. So we talk about the home of American tennis. This is really where we needed a new home for player development, and we had a partnership with the, the Orlando community where essentially we were given a lot of space and time to have uh, a facility like this, and it was with the creation of this facility and most specifically our performance lab that we were able to actually create a, a performance analytics department. Uh, I'll show you, here's the picture of our performance lab. Dr. Jim Lohr walked in and he said, this is really a special place. This is all about, um, Motivation, innovation, uh, and the truth and knowledge. Uh, truth and, uh, I gotta, I'll think about it in a second. It'll come back to me. Uh, but essentially he walked in, he said, this is a, a, a special place. Truth and inspiration is what you get when you come here. You get the truth and hopefully you're able to inspire. It's a dedicated location in which we have high powered workstations where we can generate data, visualize it, have it performance team meetings, and students come in here on a weekly basis. Here's a quick video. We had a video. group of each week between six and eight kids. 
Uh, most of them were here for at least four weeks. Some of them were here for up to six weeks. So we wanted to uh, do a training block where we spent a lot of focus on improving physically, um, improving with their mental skills, with our mental skills team, and also um, improving their games from a technical and tactical standpoint. So it was great um, having this time each Wednesday with um, our performance analytics team to uh, tackle a different subject matter each week. So um, we looked at uh, things from a technical standpoint, okay. um, we looked at things from a tactical standpoint, but basically each week had a different theme. And um, we'd look at um, our players versus some of the pros and, and give them assignments so they could kind of go home and, and, and learn how to use it so they can kind of learn how to watch tennis a little bit differently. Um, you know, I think it, you know, most of these kids, they, they more have been watching tennis from a fan standpoint instead of from um, you know, kind of a, a standpoint they, they want to learn um, and watch as a, as a coach would. All right, so it gives you a little bit of feel what our lab process is. We have like three or four of those sessions a week. We get together with players and coaches. They talk tennis, raises their tennis IQ. Um, the, the last piece that has been pretty difficult to put together for us is the, this idea of quantifying what is physical in tennis. You know, when coaches and players talk about what a physical match is, and we've been able to partner with a, with a world uh, leader as well as an industry leader of wearables and cover all 12 of our courts at PD so that we can generate this information on load and volume. Uh, we have a video for this and, and uh, won't be able to share at this point, we're run out of time. But probably the last, you know, other sports have been way ahead in this particular area when it comes to load and volume of measuring those particular things. And in tennis, it's difficult because of the size of the court. It's not a basketball court, it's not soccer, you don't cover as much territory. So a little tougher to do. So the last two things I'll talk about is our, our data lake. You know, essentially we have all this data from matches, from pl uh, player and ball tracking, wearables, et cetera, that all comes into the data warehouse. And when we're able to bring it all together, we can now create insights that we've never been able to do before. We've always done player analysis projects, but we weren't able, able to necessarily link tactical, physical, mental, and emotional all together and be able to do research that drives the industry. And this is kind of uh, our next uh, uh, last front. So when I, when I look at the, the summary here, essentially, we use data, video, and, and information to validate our philosophy, and that was really the foundation of, of the information. We collaborated with the private sector. We created education specifically for parents and players, um, but uh, also coaches. We evaluate technically, tactically, physically, and mentally, and use a performance team approach. We celebrate the development in our finest moments, which I'm a highlight filmmaker, so if you need any help on that, you can see me. Uh, and we, we partner with the best technology partners. And of the, the, the takeaways here, I, I think number one is start using analytics to validate your teaching and coaching approaches in whatever sport that they are. Two is to scale the learning and your development efforts to the base. Make sure that what you do at the top impacts the lowest level. And three, Recognize that the relationship is everything. Player teams don't care what you know until they know that what you care. Uh, competitive advantage isn't about the most advanced data or tech. It's about the relationships and trust that you build with player teams by delivering results at every level on the pathway. So thank you very much. I won't be able to take questions, but uh, you guys can come up and, and we'll have a chat. I really appreciate your time.